Matthew 7, 7. Still in the Sermon on the Mount. We conclude this chapter. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asks is receiving. He that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. For what man is there of you, whom if his son asks bread, will you give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will you give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him? Now, I had to read that entirely. Because you can't go in the scripture and say, Asking shall be given you, seeking shall be found, and knocking shall be opened. Ta da! Because this portion of scripture is not a blank check. This is not prosperity to a point. We are told that. If a man's son comes and says, Dad, can I have some bread? You're going to give him a stone? If he wants some fish, you're going to give him a serpent. And you would say, no, he wouldn't. So when you contact with 7 and 8, 9, 10, and 11, you can't ask for something that's going to be hurtful, evil, wicked, and expect God to say, okay, Because he wouldn't give the wouldn't give bread. I mean, he wouldn't give the stone instead of the bread. He wouldn't give the serpent instead of the fish. And Matthew seven eleven says good things. We got to realize that. Okay, ask a seek s k knock. You also got to think of the, res the three responses that God has to prayer. Yes, no, later, or not now. And this is, the, you know, the liberal church, the, the prosperity church, the, the great, uh, you know, Baptist church. Church in the book of Matthew, they're going over and look, I seek not. And then you get Christians, they ask, they seek, and not, and they don't get what they want. And it's not a want, it, is it a need? You may say, God, I, I want a sports car. And you may need transportation. And God may give you a Yugo. It's not a sports car. It's transportation. And what God is, let's see how you do with the Yugo. You can take care of the Yugo. Maybe we'll move it up to a sedan. <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> what many will try to do is make Santa Claus, I mean, God makes God Santa Claus. You know, at the end, toward the end of the year, you're going to finally, you're going to be good, you're going to behave yourself because, you know, he knows you're good or bad, and you're going to write out the things, you're going to mail it to the North Pole. <clears throat> and you can write a hundred things on a hundred page list. And get 99 and that one is going to ruin your whole year. I didn't get that for Christmas. Oh, see, that's the problem. You know, celebrating Jesus' birthday, December 25th, which is not deep. God may say, you know what? 
I'm, well, I'm not going to say December 25th. I'm gonna, December, you're not ready for it. Let's try April in two years. And God doesn't need God doesn't need to say, you know, as I tarry, I, I know who I'm gonna give it. Then we gotta think of another thing. We got joy, J O Y. Jesus first, others next, and you last. God's not going to answer a selfish prayer. God may not give that man or woman what they desire or want when they leave a spouse or their children in great need. Okay? But the Bible does tell us as seek and knock. Now we're not going to do it, but if you run over to James, written to the twelve tribes scattered aboard, James 1 1. Matthew's written to the Jews. James says, and I'm not quoting correctly, he says, listen, you don't have because you never asked. Then he turns around and says, you don't receive because you ask amiss. I can't answer that prayer. You'll ruin yourself. You cannot have your five-year-old child come into the room with your razor and say, I, I, I'm going to shave myself. You're going to get up awfully quick and grab that thing from his hands and hide it make sure you can't get to it. Now, there may become a time when that child will need to shave. But the proper answer would be, not now. May have to wait it out. Patience. I don't like that one. Maybe the answer is a yes. Okay. Maybe the answer is just outright no. You can't have an undisciplined child, a child who, who is misbehaving. And they turn around, you know, you're in the store and say, oh, I want that. No, uh, no. After what you did, after what you've been behaving, after what you said to that, after, you know, what you just did in school, now you're off school for a whole week. No. What you do with the cat? What you, no. You can't go into Matthew 7, 7, 7, 8 with, here's my Christmas list, Santa Claus. Put me up on your knee. And then a mature Christian will look back in his time, reflect on God, and remember, you know, I thank God God said no to that prayer. I thank God that God said, not now, I'll give it to you later. Ask, that's speaking, shall be given to you. Seek, that's gone looking, you shall find. Knock, and shall be opened to you. I didn't get it. Well, you still can get a no answer. <laughs> Ask, and shall be given to you. Okay, no. Seek. You're going to find. Not now. 
CD yes, no, not now. Answers completely to asking you should give it. All right, here it is. Asking shall be given to you, not now. Seeking shall find later. You know, the early explorers of the world, the Europeans, when they set out exploring, they didn't jump in their ship. Okay, we found a fast route to China. <laughs> no. I mean, Christopher Columbus was the foot, was the, was the, <laughs> he was a loser in the group. You say, why? He tried to find a quick way to China. He got lost <laughs> and never made it. He got the Bahamas. And those explorers that said, okay, we're going to go find a route to China. We're going to go find where this body of water goes. And they went and took trials and took trips. And it was a later and they found out. Lewis and Clark, when they went west, that wasn't an overnight thing. When the pilgrims landed in what today is Massachusetts, and there's already the touch of God of hand that God had provided for them before they even knew it. That there had been a settlement there that had been wiped out by disease. Well, they were on the ship praying in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Lord God, prepare where we're going, God, and whatever the prayers were. And nothing more for the pilgrims to survive that harsh winter. And God sent sending some of the Native Americans to help them out. And they had their first Thanksgiving, it wasn't around Thanksgiving either. Those Native Americans helped the pilgrims out, and look what we've done to the Native Americans. You better not be not deceived. God's not mocked. What so a man so that he shall also reap. You're going to get paid in America, Europeans. Knock, it shall be opened unto you. Well, what do you do if you knock and it's one of the cases where God says there's a door shut and no man can open and God's not even going to open it. I'm not going to tell you every single prayer is going to be a yes. I'm not going to tell you every single prayer is going to be not now. There will be a no. For everyone that asks is receive it. Yes, no, maybe. I mean, yes, no, not now. He that seeketh find it. No. Yes. Not now. To him that knocketh it shall be open. Not now. No. Yes. Well, that's not the answer I wanted. That's too bad. There are churches today. Oh, we want to. And those the 4,000, 5,000 in the early book of Acts. You can't even handle the 10. You got people in your church right now, you are avoiding. You don't even know how to talk to them. You don't even make them feel at home in your church. God ain't going to give you nobody else. God ain't going to give you a blessing when you got Satan sitting in the front row, amen, in you, and Jesus Christ is outside the door knocking. And God ain't going to give you a blessing to church through church history and you don't even know what church history is. Imagine a pastor asking you to, when you drive by a Catholic church to say a prayer for it and take Fox's Book of Monitors and smack him across the head with it. Or what man 
Is there a view? Notice he doesn't say a father. He just says, what man? Whom a son will ask bread. Oh, what if the kids sit in the restaurant? What would you like, son? Have some bread? He comes over the plate of the stolen. That'll be 25 cents, please. Wait a minute. Now, what is evil? When Jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights, the devil came and said, take, take those stones and turn them into bread, will you? Go ahead. You're God. No one else around looking. Or if he ask a fish, will you give him a serpent, a snake? That's unclean. Serpent. Remember, we're to a Judy, Judean. We're to a Jewish congregation. If ye then, being evil, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's what he's saying. You ain't the perfect father, you ain't the perfect mother, you ain't the perfect man. But in your perfection, you will give him bread, you will give him a fish. Was it Jesus had five loaves and four loaves of bread and two fish? And he fed the multitude? You know what Jesus could have told the multitudes? Get out of here. That's what the disciples wanted them to do. What did the disciples say? I'm going to send them away. They're like, uh, they'll faint. They'll pass out. They ain't got no food. That's all cares. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts, <laughs> bread and fish a gift, Yeah, they just had that, uh, oh, where they go? Uh, the monsoon, not the monsoon, yeah. The Asian hurricane, I forget what they call tsunami, something like that. Over the Philippines, and I'm seeing a lot of my friends are now being saved. Or Hurricane Ian come through Florida. And when, when you go to a church, and they hand you a bottle of water and a sandwich. And you're sitting there, you're looking at that sandwich like it's a piece of gold. When you go up to the people who, who, who's provided, trying to help you out, you say, there's only one thing I want. What's that? I mean, we got, we got Doritos, we got sandwiches. But what's the one thing you want? Just give me a cold cup of water. All I've had since this is out this room water. Yeah, it could be a gift. So it can be some of the things you want from God. I got one strong prayer right now I want from God. And believe me, I quote the verses right to him for it. So you ever think about this, giving good gifts to your children? Alright, let me go way off on the other side for a moment here. Let, I'm not doing a bunny trail, but, you know, I'm pulled the, I pulled the shotgun up and I shot the bunny. you got children. They're near starving. You know, they got to wait to go to school Sunday, Monday, to get, to get a free meal at, 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 at school. Taxpayers' consent. Meanwhile, you got cigarettes, Marlboros, you got Budweiser, beer, you got tattoos all over your, your, your cankered body. Vaping. 
maybe some uh, 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 illegal drugs, wasting money on your Harley or your truck in Daytona Beach, Florida. May your children or your spouse ain't getting all they should be getting from you. Bread. I'll say tuna fish because that's the only kind of fish I like. At the judgment we consider a gift. So let's look at it like this. Let's go back to alms. You don't want to give somebody money. Because you're looking at them like, you know, if I give them money, Daytona Beach, Florida, we saw today, we saw a play. <clears throat> We're now hiring. <clears throat> and they're right there asking for money. I'm not going to give you money. I heard the other day, we were sitting in the same spot the other day, I heard the guy say, He's been he's been handed twenty. I heard another person say he makes a ton of money. He doesn't have to claim an IRS. But let's say for whatever circumstance, good or bad, let's say you don't feel like you don't feel comfortable giving money. You don't know what they're going to use the money for. Let's say you go into a restaurant or fast food place. And you get their fish sandwich. I don't remember my daughter or my son. They used to love the fish sandwich. It's like it's it's a they don't even put anything on it. It's just a fish and two buns. Put something on it. They used to tell. Them. But is that not bread and fish? And if you were to give him, say, say, Lord, I want to give him this meal. I don't know if I can trust him with money. If he really needs money, Lord, I'm sorry. But if I can give him this, this clown burger, fish burger, you just giving him a gift. What if I bought somebody some fruit or Gave him a, a bigger meal or, or got him a grinder or a, whatever. God said that's a gift. He said, don't get into the Baptist preacher. Everything is money, 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 money. You want to get your preacher really mad? Start throwing... Uh, Walmart gift cards into the collection book. Well, yeah, we got to pay for the electricity. <laughs> Let's go back. Yeah, when somebody calls you, oh, we got to, you know, we got to pray for it. Uh, but when you need money, you know, we get a message. On to your children. How much more shall your father, capital F, which is in heaven, hallowed be thy name, Give good things, not a gift, things. What's a thing? A thing is a noun. You say, okay, what about you, Stanley? You want a wife. That's good because Proverbs 18 says, says and I'm not going to quote the verse completely, a man that has found a wife has found a good, okay, Lord, I'm asking for a thing. And obtain favor of the Lord. You ever wonder if Mary prayed to be the Messiah's mother? I don't, the Bible doesn't say I don't know if any Jewish girl would have prayed for her to be the Messiah's mother, yet if she prayed that prayer, it says in Luke, when we get to Luke, Lord willing, 
the Holy Spirit shall come upon you in that holy thing. You want a baby? In the womb, it's called a thing. To them that ask him. God wants to give you good things. If it's not good, God doesn't want to give it to you. Now, it may be a good thing in your mindset, or it may be a good thing that God says, okay, you got to wait it out. You can't run into Matthew 7, 9, 10, 11, 12. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. Then you'll just be a spoiled brat. You realize Jesus, twice in his lifetime, said, Give me a drink. Neither time, the woman at the well, John 4, and on the cross, they gave him vinegar. They didn't give him the drink. Jesus told one, he said, the foxes have holes, the birds of the earth have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. You would think that he would want a, something like a pillow. Therefore, all things whatsoever he would that men do to you do ye also to them for this is the law and the prophets all right there's your golden rule do unto others as others do unto you where are we and who are we talking to I'll answer your question. For in Matthew, Old Testament, we're talking to Jews. That's not a Christian attitude to have. Church history speaks. Can you imagine Paul? Do unto others as others do unto you. All right, give me that axe. Put your neck down there. How about Peter? All right. Give me those nails. Let's put them on the cross. What if Stephen, okay, give me some rocks too. The golden rule is in the Bible, but is not this dispensation. It is Old Testament. There's no church. There are no Christians. I know a church. I know a pastor. Wrong way, Jordan. Oh, they're Christians back in the Old Testament and all that. Okay. So and everything we're saying right now is for the church, though it's not for the church. Along with the other many things that are uh, falsely being taught out of his church. Golden Rule... 712. Go look it up. You can find it. Type out Golden Rule in, in Google Pictures and you'll see all the do unto others. No even quote Matthew 4, Matthew 712. Do unto others. Do unto others. Blah, 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 blah. Finish the verse that they don't. This is the law, Moses, and the prophets. Two of the three parts of the Old Testament, the third being the, prof, the, the, the poets. The poetry. Job, Psalms, Proverbs. Jesus tells you, though, the, though people in 2022 cannot tell you that the golden rule is Old Testament. Later on, Jesus is going to tell us. Later on, uh, John the Apostle is going to tell us, love your enemies. 
love the brethren. I don't think any apostle would say, as far as the church, do unto others as others do unto you. Like, there'll be a bra in the church for what Christians do to Christians. 